Greetings, fellow citizens of Disneyland. Bricky here. Today's adventure, breaking down what exactly is Disneyland Forward, which represents a new potential future for the Disneyland Resort and a brand new series that I'm so excited to share with you here on my YouTube channel. So let me just start by saying that Disneyland Ford is my content dream. To be able to make a series of videos, not only documenting the developments, the press releases, and potential outcomes of Disneyland Ford, both the good and the bad, this is something that I am so excited to break down into several videos for you. And I plan on covering everything that Disney releases for us, as well as doing a deep breakdown of the website that just launched last Thursday. But I also am excited to give you on the ground coverage of everything that Disneyland is talking about, everything that Disneyland is proposing. I'm excited to cover the art of imagination and how Disneyland Ford could change the resort forever. I want to explore how these ideas could be built, what we could expect as fans as far as locations and dreamscapes that could be erected, and how will this design change the future of our beloved Disneyland, Disney's California Adventure, the Toy Story parking lot, and the footprint where the hotels currently reside. And most importantly, in this first phase, how does the future of the potential Disneyland Resort affect the city of Anaheim and the citizens of Anaheim? So if you've enjoyed the way that I've covered the reopening of Disneyland and the evolution of the Disneyland Annual Pass program, hopefully you will enjoy this new series as well because as a lifelong graphic designer and illustrator, former illustrator for the Wonderground Gallery, this is a subject that is all about my interest of Disneyland and its future design. So with all of that, let's get down to business. What exactly is Disneyland Forward? And also what it isn't. Disneyland Forward is a multi-year public planning effort with the city of Anaheim. Essentially, Disneyland Ford is a program or a plan or a proposal to learn how to work together with the city of Anaheim so that Disney can try to leverage what they need for the future growth of Disneyland, but in a way where they can learn how to work together with the city of Anaheim. It's essentially a proposal, a, an idea, a, a new marketing program to try to build a better working relationship with the city of Anaheim and to try to get what Disneyland feels that it needs for proper growth in the future. But ultimately what we're looking at with Disneyland Ford, and this is what it really, really boils down to. How can the park grow in a way that is beneficial for Disneyland Resort and Disney as a company, but also in a way that is most beneficial for the city of Anaheim and the citizens of Anaheim? That's exactly what Disneyland Ford truly is in its essence. And this is very important to focus on because previous efforts have failed because they were worried more about the first and not the latter more worried about what does Disneyland need, how does Disney need to grow, and not so much what does the city of Anaheim want or how do the citizens of Anaheim need to be reflected in Disney's plan. Past failed projects have simply just not completely thought about what do the neighboring businesses of Anaheim need for their future growth, or other projects have made elected officials feel taken advantage of by the huge corporation in town. In future videos, we will break down where these past projects failed and how Disneyland Ford can set itself up to succeed. But it seems that Disneyland has learned from these failed projects and is ready to build a better relationship by adjusting their strategy to build a big, beautiful tomorrow. Disneyland Ford is setting the stage for Disney to invest for years to come. What Disneyland is looking for here in this better, beneficial relationship for both park and citizens of the city surrounding it is Disneyland is looking for some adjustments to current Anaheim regulations and rules regarding construction and zoning laws. So Disneyland is saying, if we can get these rules to bend in our favor, then we can properly invest in the future of the resort and help put money back into the Anaheim community for decades to come. What this boils down to is uh, everybody learned a lot this last year. Anaheim now knows they need Disneyland way more than they ever thought that they did. But also from Disneyland's failed past projects, Disneyland has learned pre-pandemic that they need to be a better neighbor to the city and community that surrounds them than they have in the past. So that the city of Anaheim 
could remove the restrictions to take off all the limitations and allow Walt Disney Imagineering to do better than what anyone else can. Creative problem solving with the least amount of design restrictions as possible, which would mean many of the current design restraints would be removed. Over the last year, it feels like Anaheim's like, yeah, Disney, we need you. And Disney's like, I'm sorry about those last couple of years. We'll try to do better. That is the easy way to break all of this down. But friends, let me explain to you now what Disneyland Ford is not. It is not an announcement of a third gate here in Anaheim. No way is that what this is about. It is not an announcement of DCA or Disneyland expanding. It is not the announcement of a potential Disney Springs West taking over the Toy Story parking lot. And certainly in no way whatsoever, no matter how much magnification you have in your copy of Photoshop, it is not an announcement of future lands or future attractions to come. These things may happen as a direct benefit or as a direct result of Disneyland Ford, but Disneyland Ford as it stands right now are none of these things. And many fans, many fellow content creators have put out a very misleading message saying some of these items. Okay, so these are the boring details to most, and that's why everybody got fixated on all the beautiful comp art, all the beautiful things that are in the website. This is the boring part to most people, but this is the part of the story that I love the most. What Disneyland Ford is doing, and, and this is a concept that I'm truly in love with and I've been fascinated with, we have a fascinating dilemma happening here in America. Traditional retail is eroding. The American mall is dying and is abandoned. You'll find that a lot of folks, time that they used to spend shopping and going to malls has been moved over to spending their time doing experiential entertainment offerings. The American landscape is quickly shifting and all of this gives Disneyland the ability to react to this environmental culture shift. So essentially Disneyland Ford is Disney asking for permission to be a part of a radical new style of environmental design, which I am so here for and why I'm so excited to document all of this for you outside of the Disney headlines and press releases. I'm excited to do my own work to break this down to you and to go on this exploration along with the city of Anaheim and Disneyland with their Disneyland Forward project. Here's the current relationship that Disneyland has with the city of Anaheim. In the 1990s, the city of Anaheim approved specific plans that would guide the growth of Disneyland Resort and businesses in the newly formed Anaheim Resort area. And while those plans resulted in major improvements to the entire Anaheim Resort, their traditional district zone approach does not allow for the diverse, integrated experiences theme park visitors now seek, severely limiting Disney's ability to continue investing in Anaheim. Breaking this down in a more visual tool, I love looking at things in a visual way. Currently, the way the 1990 regulations and rules exist, this is how the city of Anaheim sees real estate. Here we have an aerial map of Disney's California Adventure, Paradise Pier Hotel, and the Simba parking lot. This is part of the Disneyland Resort that is in question for Disneyland Ford. And the way that the city of Anaheim currently sees this photo is just like this. This area is parking and only parking. This area is a hotel and only a hotel. And this area is entertainment and only entertainment. Each one of these things are isolated in the way that they can be used. And this system has worked. It has helped the Disneyland theme park evolve into the Disneyland Resort. But you know, the world has changed a lot in the last year, not to mention the last 30 years from the 90s. And Disneyland, and this is why I love it so much, Disneyland has a real real estate problem. Disneyland accidentally let a city sprout up all around it when they were kind of the only neighbor in town. So for Disneyland to really create something that is both compelling and future forward, Imagineering just needs a new set of rules that they are allowed to dream, design, and play within. Here's a basic example, and we'll get deeper into these as we move forward with the series, of what a future forward facing development could actually look like. Today, what we're seeing right here in the symbol lot is just parking. But in years to come, it could evolve into entertainment that is right next door to hotels and lodging that then also has 
parking embedded with inside of it, all woven together in a seamless, breathtaking design by Walt Disney Imagineering. But here's another example of how this type of forward-facing design could evolve. Today, this is just straight up a flat parking lot. But how do we think of this property not as a horizontal spread, but more of a vertical climb? You could have underground parking that is down below what could be used for a building for an entertainment complex. Imagine pulling in off of Disneyland Way, being directed down into an underground parking garage. But also at the same time, imagine walking around inside of DCA where you enter into a dark ride show building having no idea that beneath you is where your car is parked. But then to evolve even more through the imagination of Walt Disney Imagineering, when you check into your hotel room later on that night, you have no idea that the attraction that you enjoyed with your family is directly below your room, which is directly above your automobile where you parked earlier that day. Then capping off the night with all the amazing memories you made at Disneyland, maybe you would be on the roof of said hotel overlooking the theme park as you enjoy a nighttime show from this nice socially distant space. Here we have parking, hotel, and entertainment all existing in the exact same footprint. And Disneyland Ford aims to accomplish these type of forward thinking scenarios, which simply cannot be done today. Today, hotel, theme park, retail, and dining are all part of one immersive experience. Guests expect that the future of entertainment will seamlessly weave all uses together in ways that were hard to imagine 25 years ago when the city created these specific plans. So to break down Disneyland Ford in just one word, it's a study. Disneyland Ford is a marketing piece promoting public goodwill. It's an idea on how Disneyland could potentially build a better tomorrow that begins with a better relationship with their partner, the city of Anaheim. And now I'm happy to announce it's also a new video series where we are gonna go deep into the future design thinking of Disneyland and how this will impact the resort and the city of Anaheim. And together we're gonna to discover what the new future crossroad intersection where entertainment crosses paths with environmental design. And I hope I've now been able to help you adjust your expectations of exactly what Disneyland Ford is and that you're not let down. And I don't want you to stop your imagination. This series will be full of so much imagination of what these specific plots of land could evolve into with the adjusting of the rules and what other potential properties around the Disneyland Resort could evolve into. We're gonna get into a lot, and I don't ever want you to stop believing in the magic and stop your imagination from wondering what could it look like if they built this there? But I do always feel that it's my responsibility to break down what is happening and to explain to you what isn't happening, at least for right now. So I hope you're not let down by this breakdown, and instead, I hope you're excited to document and explore the futurism of the Disneyland Resort. Hey friends, if you enjoyed today's video, comment below. I would love to know if you're on board for this new video series. And also, I would always love to hear what your ideas are for what Disneyland Ford could eventually yield for the Disneyland Resort. If you like today's video, please give it a like. That helps so many more people find my content. It's a little bit of a baby channel. I could use your help. So while you're here, why not think about subscribing? And while you subscribe, ring the bell because every time I'm at the Disneyland Resort, I always do a live stream and the Disneyland Ford video series is going to get so deep into the future evolution of the Disneyland Park in a way that I don't think many other people are capable of seeing. And if you enjoy my video content and you want to see Disneyland Ford evolve into a fully materialized video series where I can afford to go out and shoot all these buildings and build animations and models to show you how the future could work, well then friend, I need your help today by joining my friends over at club1313.com. And by the way, Club 1313 members, thank you so much for giving me the freedom to pursue my passion, which is the future evolution of the Disneyland Resort. So friends, until the next time I see you, in a third gate, in a new land, in a new attraction, in a new hotel, in Disney Springs West. I'll see you back here on the channel with more Disneyland news. Thank you so much for watching. 